During my very first day at the university, I come to a lecture and I see a bizarre phenomenon. As soon as the professor opens his mouth, everyone around me start to anxiously write something down, copying word for word what he says and writes on the blackboard. And I just sit there in disbelief, thinking to myself, why? I'd like to argue that such conventional note-taking is extremely ineffective. I will talk about why I don't do it and how instead you can channel this time and energy into a more valuable approach, which supports deep understanding in the long term. And yes, we will talk about how Zettelkasten fits in this framework. If you're ready, buckle up. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, an educational platform for self-paced interactive learning. It's a well-known fact that solving lots of problems is the absolute best way to gain intuitive understanding, especially in subjects with high level of abstraction, such as math or computer science. Brilliant allows you to do just that. It provides hands-on lessons containing clear and intuitive explanations of key ideas, which are intertwined with interactive demonstrations and exercises, helping you to deepen the knowledge through active engagement. Courses on Brilliant cover a great variety of topics in STEM fields, from logic and scientific thinking to differential equations and quantum computing. For the past couple of weeks, I've been carving out free time to learn some concepts from pure mathematics as a way to deepen my understanding of data analysis techniques we are applying in the lab. I'm currently taking the course on group theory, and I'm really enjoying the experience. Although certain problems can initially feel quite challenging, this is what makes solving them so beneficial in the first place. Plus, every problem comes with a clear step-by-step -step solution. You can join millions of people learning on Brilliant and get started for free just by clicking this link. And the first 200 people to use it will also get a 20% off an annual membership. My name's Artem, I'm a computational neuroscience student and researcher. Here we talk about the brain, both the theory of how it works under the hood, as well as practice of how to study and learn more effectively. If you're interested, consider subscribing to the channel not to miss anything. In this video, we are talking about note-taking. I'd like to begin by emphasizing that different notes serve different purposes. And you should be very clear with yourself about this purpose because this will determine the type of note-taking workflow you should follow. And I think this is actually the key takeaway of everything that will follow next, that you should choose the right tool that matches your goal. For some reason, students think that writing something down is equivalent to embedding this information in their brain, but that is simply not the case. It's actually striking how many people just blindly follow this routine of coming to a class and sitting down and desperately trying to write as much stuff down as possible and then never look at those notes again, or at least skim through them the night before the exam. And ever since high school, I felt that something is inherently wrong with this approach. I managed to pinpoint two reasons that are used by the majority of people to defend the classic conventional note-taking approach. The point I hear most often is that writing stuff down helps to memorize and process this information. But in my experience, I found that very often it actually has the opposite effect. You listen to a professor and everything makes perfect sense, so you decide to write some of it down. As you focus on writing, your attention becomes dispersed. But the stream of information doesn't stop. So some words go in one ear and out the other. Wait, what the f is he talking about? You inevitably miss some fraction of the information being delivered in the background. It might not be a big deal, but every now and then you will miss a linked sentence or a crucial definition. In my experience, it's much more beneficial to fully devote your attention primarily to listening and absorbing the information. There is also a phenomenon that if you take detailed notes on something, you're actually less likely to remember that information than if you didn't write anything down. One explanation is that your brain removes the memory after it ensures that it has been successfully offloaded onto the external storage. Another point I see people make 
is that classes are invaluable sources of unique information. Now, this indeed was the case not too long, maybe just 50 years ago, when access to books was limited, internet didn't exist whatsoever, so going to classes and actually writing stuff down was the only way to ensure that this information stays with you. But this is not the case anymore. Everything, the syllabus, the typed notes, countless textbooks, video explainers, online websites are all available for free at your fingertips. You can find any piece of information within seconds if you know where to look for it. In fact, nowadays we have more knowledge than we can possibly process. So why create additional redundant sources of the same information? Let me clarify something. I'm not saying that you should avoid using your pen or a keyboard like a fire. No, sometimes it's actually good to jot down some notes. But the key thing is, you have to be intentional about them and always ask yourself whether you are creating redundancy or not. To give you a concrete example, suppose you are sitting in a biochemistry class and the professor talks about glycolysis and then she gets to a particular enzyme like glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, emphasizing that we will now explore its mechanism and it's really important and we will be asked about it on the exam. And as she's providing the explanation, drawing out the mechanism and talking about which amino acid residues do what, I'm not going to write a single word other than just mechanism. Why? Because I know that anytime I can access a beautiful picture of that mechanism on the web, I don't need my own poorly drawn version of it. Right now, I'd rather just sit still and devote my full attention to absorbing the explanation and not trying to desperately draw it out and understand what's going on at the same time. And that one single word is enough, because all I need is the cue for myself that this particular concept is important, so I should probably look into it when preparing for the exam. And there are other examples when briefly jolting down notes is useful. Like when you hear about relevant resources and the books professor recommends. This is also subject dependent, because in math and physics, very often you are expected to solve problems, which is kind of tough to do if you don't have anything to write on. I can go further, but I think you get the point. When you write something down, always be mindful about what this piece of information is doing there and what goal it serves. Make an emphasis on including different cues and hooks for yourself which just point you to the direction of relevant information. At this point, you probably want to ask me, okay, okay, terrific, but what the hell do you do then? Do you just sit around and listen to lectures all of the time? I have three different layers of note-taking, and every single one of them serves a specific goal. Fleeting notes, embedding notes, and Zettelkasten notes. Let's discuss them in more detail. The first type of notes I take is the fleeting notes. I've already given you an example of such a note when we talked about glycolysis. It's basically those brief notes that you take throughout the day. And their main goal is to reliably capture the information. For example, when in the middle of the day you suddenly get an awesome idea for a blog post, or you remember you wanted to research that math topic. And because they serve as this quick capture, the main criteria is being close at hand. That's why depending on the situation, I will take them in a notes application on my phone, write something down on a piece of paper or a notability application on my iPad. It really doesn't matter as long as relevant ideas make their way into the stages of further processing. Scribbling something down when solving a problem can also be considered a fleeting note, even though most of the time it is thrown away, because its main job is providing the medium for practicing a particular skill the art of problem solving. I call them embedding because their main job is to embed information into my long-term memory. And this is the type of notes I take most often relating to my university classes. They are usually laid out in the form of flashcards in software like Anki or EmNote. And here is the pipeline. After I'm done processing the information, either listening to a lecture or reading through a textbook, I will create flashcards in the form of questions and answers from the things I remember. For example, in the case of glycolysis, I would create flashcards like what reaction is catalyzed by the GAPDH enzyme, what key amino acids work in the active site of GAPDH, and schematically draw the destiny of a proton 
during JDPH catalysis. I then go to the source and revise my flashcards to see if there are any mistakes or if I've missed something important. The crucial step is regularly reviewing them through spaced repetition. In the previous video, I discussed this concept and the process of creating flashcards in more detail. So right before the exam, I have up to 300 cards on a particular subject. And that's it. I don't need any fancy handwriting with colorful pens and whatnot, because this information is readily available in the textbook or on the internet. Instead, notes serve purely as a tool to promote memorization, and that's why they are created accordingly. Finally, the next stage of my note-taking, which is a bit more high-level, is Zettelkasten notes. They are done in a different way and with a different purpose in mind. Zettelkasten helps to collect valuable ideas and to promote creative thinking. In case you are unfamiliar with the philosophy of Zettelkasten, I recommend this video right here where I discuss what it is and what benefits it can bring to the table. But basically, it comes down to writing individual ideas and searching for interconnections between them. Because by definition, ideas from every source are welcome in your second brain, Zettelkasten can be just as well used for the things you learn in college. However, I'd like to emphasize a few things to keep in mind when doing so. Remember to follow the principles of atomic and interconnected notes, because it can be easy to slip into turning your Zettelkasten into yet another conventional notebook with divisions into subjects and hardly any backlinks. 2. Do not copy the contents of the textbook. It's a place for your own personal idea network. So only write down things you see fit. Structure the notes and build interconnections as you want. 3. Don't include anything obvious. And 4. Only write things down you're passionate about. Working with your second brain should not feel like a chore. Instead, it's a process that brings you the sense of joy and meaning. In short, if you already have a Zettelkasten system, then treat your lectures and classes as just another source of information just like you would reading books and articles in your free time. And if you haven't tried Zettelkasten note-taking yet, give it a go. It's an amazing tool for learning and creating, because when a particular concept is not isolated, but rather embedded in this huge network, you are more likely to remember it and see the big picture. That's pretty much my entire note-taking workflow in a nutshell that I use in my university studies and in my research. Hopefully, some parts of it will resonate with you. If you liked the video, share it with your friends, press the like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Goodbye, and thanks for the interesting knowledge.